making these metals or uh, making these materials into metals. Now, I have said previously that is the ringing sound, right? The ringing sound generated when any, when any material falling down will result will be resulted into some sound. That sound is known as sonorous. That property is known as sonorous. And mostly metals will be generating the sounds. Therefore, we can classify the metals by these sounds also. That is sonorous. And now the characteristics or the properties hold by the metals are majorly metals are very hard and they are good conductors of electricity and they are also the good conductors of heat and they are lustrous, malleable, ductile and sonorous. That means I have previously explained about the sonorous good conductors conduction properties and the lustrous, malleable and ductile. These, all these properties will be called by metals. These are the physical properties which we can touch and feel. And we will be seeing these are the good examples of metals which are following all these properties. And some exemptions that are mercury which will be only in the liquid state at atmosphere. That means at room temperature. And that is one more uh, exemption regarding the metals. And other metals will be in solid form only and other exemption is the sodium and potassium they are very soft we can cut with knife also that means previously I have said that metals are very hard and lustrous right they can't change into their shape but now this sodium and potassium are the exemption cases where we can cut them by the knife they are very soft and tender and those two are the exemptions please keep um, please make it note and now coming to the non-metals, there are different types of non-metals that are the best examples of non-metals are coal and sulphur. Coal and sulphur, when they are beaten with a hammer, they will be producing the powder rather than the sheets and wires. That is the drawback. That means that by these properties, we can classify them as non-metals. Now, they are, the other important properties of non-metals are they are not sonorous and they are not so hard and they are poor conductors of heat and electricity and they have no ductility nature and no malleability and no sonorous that means no sound is generated when they are falling down so all these properties will result into the formation of another group such as non-metals the best examples of non-metals are sulfur, carbon, oxygen and phosphorus all these are good examples of non-metals which holds these properties as shown and by coming to the metals, they have in the ductility malleability as the basic properties. These are the difference between the metals and non-metals coming to physical properties. Now let us study the chemical properties and their differences between the metals and non-metals. And how the, by coming to chemical properties means the reactions, what they will be undergoing in the atmosphere that is the air. When the metals are reacted with the air and what they will be generating and the non-metals when they are reacted with air, what they will be generating and when they are react with acids and bases, what those metals and non-metals will generate. All these proper, all these <coughs> terms and equations all will come, in, come under chemical reactions and chemical equations of metals and non-metals. Let us see the chemical properties of metals and non-metals. While coming to chemical properties, I have previously said that chemical properties are the properties which cannot be seen through the naked eye and which cannot be felt. Right? Now, these chemical properties are defined as the chemical reactions which are done between the metals and non-metals with water, acids and bases. And one more thing is oxygen. Now, these chemical reactions are the reactions. First reaction is taken as reaction with oxygen. 
whether it is dissolved in water and it will be analyzing whether it is acid or base. By based upon that test, we will be analyzing the nature of the magnesium metals. Now, here we have seen the two types of chemical equations. That is, first one is the chemical equation, that is the reaction between the iron, oxygen and water. That is, whenever iron, oxygen and water will, will come across together, they will be forming the iron oxides, right? That is, FeO. And in second reaction, we will be seeing that magnesium and oxygen, that is, Magnesium when it is reacted with the oxygen present in atmosphere it leads to the formation of magnesium oxides that means MgO that is oxides are generated and these magnesium oxides and iron oxide means all these metals when reacted with oxygen or with the in what is present in the air or the oxygen what is present in water then they are resulting into the formation of oxides that are known as metal oxides and these metal oxides are considered as bases because whenever you brought the red, red litmus paper into the consideration then if at all you take the rust which is formed by the iron particles and if at all you take the ash which is formed after burning the magnesium in the presence of oxygen both this ash and the rust, when they are brought under the red litmus paper, you will be seeing that the red litmus paper is converted into blue. That is not that is that is showing the basic nature of the metals. That is, when the red is converted into blue, we will be saying those elements as the base elements or base metals. And whenever blue litmus paper is converted to red, we will be calling them as of the metals and non metals and by this we will be classifying them into acids and bases while coming to the metal oxides these metal oxides when converted they will be changing into the forming of bases that is having the basic nature and now whenever we test the nature of the rust that means the rust which is formed by the iron metals if at all you take some rust and if you place it in a test tube and when you make it undergo with a test of uh, dissolving in water or with the litmus paper, you will be observing the basic nature of the rust particles. So, hereby we conclude that the major property of metals is they will be converting the red to blue litmus, that is the basic nature. Metals almost they are nearer to the base properties, basic properties, that is base properties. And by coming to the non-metals, they are majorly classified as the acidic properties. That means they are inbuilt with the acidic properties and they are known as acids. By coming to the metals, they are known as bases. Now let us see the reaction of metals and non-metals with water. Previously we have learned the reaction of metals and non-metals with oxygen. Now here we will be seeing with water. That is, first we will be taking two examples such as sodium and iron and this sodium it will be vigorously reacted with water that is its nature when coming to iron it is slowly reacted with water okay now because it takes a lot of time to react with water this is the basic nature of the sodium and iron by this we can estimate how the metals and how the non-metals will be reacted with the water based upon their properties, that is chemical properties. Mostly the metals will be reacted very fastly with the water by compared to the non-metals. And coming to these non-metals, these are vigorously reacted with air, that is with oxygen which is present in the atmosphere, but they will be reacted in less content with the water. The very good example for this property is that is the phosphorus. Phosphorus when you keep it in air, when you interact it with oxygen, it will be burnt very fastly. While coming to when you place this uh, in water, it will never react with water very fast. Means it is very slowly reactable with phosphorus. So in order to prevent phosphorus, you know, from burning. Of oxygen which is in air, 
reaction with A and water. So the metals which are slowly reactable with water are mostly preserved in the water, and the metals which are vigorously reacted in with water are mostly present in crystal forms which are non-contactable non with the water. That means they are separated from water. Or it doesn't need any medium in order to react with sulfuric acid. That means you can. 